Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Bible teacher Ben Stewart. Welcome back, Ben. Thanks. Yes, so we continued on into Philippians, moving into Philippians 3. That's right. Um, so we're just going to jump right in with a couple of questions. Um, so you were talking about this um, contrast between true Christian life and pursuit of Christ versus basically boil, boiling down your spirituality to a, a list right. of things. Um, yeah. How do we do that? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think in one sense, there's, it's helpful to make lists to organize what you do in a day. So there's a natural, healthy way to do that. And even in spirituality, I think you can. Um, you know, historically, they called them spiritual disciplines. It's a way to remember to do stuff. Like my wife and I have a date night one night a week. It sounds sad. You got a discipline to go have a day, but it's just a way of securing it. So I, I think there's a way to create spiritual disciplines. I'm going to show up at this service in church. I'm going to volunteer on these days and read the Bible here. That's, that's good. I think the problem is sometimes what happens is a subtle shift in our heart. It's not even about the thing you're doing, but what is this becoming? It's becoming a way to feel good about myself that I can control. And that's ultimately the problem is we talk about how much we love loving and relationships, but relationships are messy. They're a two way street and I can't control how you'll respond to me. Um, sometimes it's easier to just have something we can control. You know, mm -hmm. I'm good at this. I know if I do this, I get that result and that result's good. So I'm going to keep doing this. And uh, rather than jump into the messy world of relationships. And I think in spirituality, if you look around the world, a lot of religious systems are just that. Mm -hmm. Follow these five points right. and you can check off that you're spiritual. And what Jesus came to blow up is you can follow all the rules and your heart be far from God. And that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to point out as a husband, you could do that. You could follow all your little list and have a really unhappy marriage. Mm -hmm. And we all know that's not right. So I think the battle is not, should I, should I not Organize when I have my quiet time. Should I leave it flowing every day? No, pick a time and do it. But when you come in, I'll talk to people that want to read through the Bible in the year. And so when they sit down to have a devotional time, it's just about, can I power through this book? And you go, whoa, what's that time for? It's to stir your affections for God, to be devoted to him. It's not about, can you smash this Bible? So they're like, owned it. You know, it's like, no, it's about what's happening. And so it's that subtle shift in the heart of I can control this, but that control steals the life. Okay, so I know why we do it, because I have a tendency to be quite the list maker myself. <laughs> okay, um, sure, what do we yeah. do about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, a couple things is one, I think being attentive to your heart. What am I doing in this? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why have I attended church today? Why? I do this to myself all the time, you know? Why am I giving this sermon? Is this sermon about proving that I'm worthy because I can do something good? Or am I really enjoying what this says about Jesus and want to help you enjoy him too? I constantly have to return to the why question on my own, you know? Mm -hmm. So personally, I'm doing that with any spiritual endeavor and not just spiritual with anything. Why did I say that to that person? Why do I? And you can analyze yourself to death. Uh, but I think if you do it in the context of knowing I'm loved and accepted by God, it can be a constructive practice to ask yourself the why question. And then one thing we didn't mention, but we read in the text is Paul ends it kind of in a funny place. It's funny because I love what he says. He says, if after he presents this whole thing, he says, if in any way you think differently, God will make it plain to you. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is, if you disagree with me, you're wrong and God will help you figure that out later. And I'll see you when you get there, which I just love that. That's a great way to end an argument. And then he says, all of us who are mature, should think this way. And he says, but let us live up to what we've attained. So he said, wherever you are in your understanding of God, your interaction with the Bible, those of us who know God know this is right. Wherever you are, he says, let us live up to what we've attained. The, the interesting is that word live up to what we've attained is it's the word march. It's a communal word. 
And so I think that's part of the secret for us is he's picturing a group of people. He says, link arms and move together in a healthy way. And then the very next verse that we didn't get to is he says, scope out the people who live according to this example and follow them. So I think for me, what I would commend for everybody listening is look around the people in your world that you go, it comes from a different place for them. They really know they're loved by God. They have that peace and they love him and they love people well. I need to get near that person. And I'm going to join a small group of people in a Bible study that, that are studying Jesus together and encouraging one another. That's where Paul ends it. Link arms and march together in, in what you know. And let's live into that. And so that's what I would encourage people. Um, and that's what I encourage people to as the growth <laughs> director. Yes, might. yes, yeah. I do. Um, that's great. So what about um, next week? Tell us what we can look forward to. Yeah, well, you know, we're obviously skipped big parts of Philippians because of time, but we'll, we'll stay in the same kind of area now. So we'll move into uh, the next piece where he talks about uh, anxiety. So just in time for holiday for shopping, holiday we're going to talk about okay. anxiety. Yeah. All right. Well, it was certainly great to have you back and looking forward to seeing you next week. And congratulations on your big announcement. Oh, thank you. And yeah. excited for the Stewart family to get some blue. Yeah, right. all that Little pink. baby boy. Yeah. Come on. So yeah. um, we're looking forward to seeing you back next week. Thanks. And thank you for joining us for Postscript. Keep your questions coming. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.